insert not view. Okay. So thank you for coming. Um, my name is uh, Mikhail Yermakopoulos, and uh, this is the second meet of uh, the APL in Barcelona. And uh, this, uh, this time, uh, the theme, uh, the, the topic uh, we'll discuss is about J, uh, which is a modern uh, math oriented APL. So uh, let's go, let's get into it. A bit of, a bit of uh, well, just the, the content of the talk, a bit of a history uh, background, and then I uh, have prepared some examples uh, just to, to go into practical uh, things straight away. And then uh, you can ask any questions. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Maybe Bob can help or someone else uh, if I get stuck. And, and then I have a slide with the references I've used. And uh, thanks uh, for the people that, that have helped um, my journey with uh, Jay. So let me minimize this one. Yeah. And so Jay is, is, a, is a language which uh, comes from, from APL. And pretty much the, the history starts around 1990 uh, when um i think um uh, roger uh and ken were, were thinking of uh, starting uh, an apl with uh, ascii uh, glyphs instead of the glyphs of uh, apl and then sorry uh, So, uh, and then um, from what I read, Arthur Whitney, uh, the creator of the language K, um, in, in one day, she wrote a, like a first version of uh, interpreter in C, which you can see it, uh, here. It's just one page, pretty much, it's a bit condensed, but um, I will share um, someone in um, uh, Y Combinator uh, did the, the effort to decompress it. Uh, and it's uh, much more readable, but it's longer, as you can see. And um, so this was this uh, this uh, basic uh, version of the interpreter um, was the the raw material that Roger started working on, and then uh, uh, Ken uh, joined, of course, uh, the efforts. Uh, it was a joint um, work of Roger and Ken, and um, from what I read from the history, uh, at that time, um, Eric Iverson had uh, created the company. Um, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I can remember the name before it became J Software. I think it was called Eric. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'll have to. To ask Eric to excuse me, but I, I can't remember the first name uh, of uh, the, the initial name of the company he had. So um, because Roger and Ken were working on J, uh, they didn't have like a, a legal uh, entity to to host their project. So Eric uh, came in. So uh, the three of them in the end uh, joined forces, and afterwards the, that company became what is uh, known as today J Software, and. Um, and uh, well, the, the code uh, is being worked from the J software team, but it's open source, so you can find the, their most recent uh, interpreter uh, source code on GitHub. I have put uh, the link here. And then, well, um, this is pretty much the whole history I have prepared. Um, I think we, we could uh, start uh, going to. Uh, into the, the examples I have prepared and uh, then see the, the various tools uh, that Jay provides and um, how useful it can be for someone interested in, well, this is a more math oriented talk. So uh, my examples are more math uh, oriented, but uh, Jay is a general purpose language. So you can do pretty much anything you want with it, um, create any kind of application you want. So, um, I'm using the, the interpreter 903, which is the latest stable version. And 
Well, um, I think I will close it and open it again because um, I've been uh, working on it. So let me just do that. I'll just close it. Uh, yeah, it's closed. So what happens when you open the, the JQT, which is uh, like a, a nice GUI for the J interpreter, you see this uh, terminal, uh, which is like the REPL pretty much. And um, so you can do the, the usual things like a calculator, right? Um, to, and uh, so uh, the plus works as plus, the, the times is the multiplication, and uh, the operator of the power is this one. And um, if you, it's, it's very useful to, to use the, the editor it has. So if you want to open, um, I have it in my downloads, in my APL, uh, here, Count, uh, yeah. So this is a nice editor that uh, Jay provides and you can use it to, well, you can see here that you have like a syntax coloring, which is really nice. And pretty much you can write your code here and it gets executed in the terminal in the REPL. So I have like this simple calculation here. Um, the shortcut to run the code and uh, select the code in the terminal is uh, control E. So you can see that it just copied the, the selected uh, code from the, from the editor and you run it. And what we do here, uh, we see that this uh, sign, it works um, between numbers as before, but also between arrays. So one to three uh, is an array and four, five, six is another an array. And what it does, it does pairwise addition. So one plus four, two plus five and three plus six. And um, we can do pretty much any operation like that. So if I want to do multiplication pairwise, um, I can do it like this and uh, okay so we can do also division and all, all the usual arithmetic operations um, so I have another um, so it's very useful the if you let's say we want to add the we have like an array with uh, three elements one to three okay and we want to add them all together uh, one could do like this uh, where how he would do it in another language like C or Python or something else. But what happens if you have like an array with uh, 100 or yeah, 100 uh, elements? Um, it would be very cumbersome to, to use this way. So JS APL provides this, um, this verb, uh, the plus uh, slash. So slash uh, pretty much uh, takes any operation in, on the left and on the right, it will take the array. And what does uh, it performs pretty much the operation uh, on the left of their slash uh, with every uh, element of the array on the left. So for this reason, with this reason, we're going to do also multiply, which will be one times two times three. So this this is like the the factorial. So the factorial in J is uh, the exclamation mark, and we can do it like that. Um, I forgot to mention that um, as in APLJ, uh, the reads the, the expressions from right to left, um, which is very helpful um, if you, uh, it helps us to, uh, to avoid using parentheses, but also can um, confuse us if you're used to, to the usual mathematical expressions. So let's say we want to do um, let's try to do this operation, okay? And uh, let's let's see before pressing what it would be uh, according to mathematics. So we know in mathematics that multiplication happens first and then addition. So according to math, we would expect that this would be two times three, six plus five would be 11. But in J, um, because it goes from right to left, uh, what will happen first will be five plus three, uh, eight and and it will be then multiplied with two. So it should be 16 instead. And that's what happens. Um, so what I said before, let's add the first 
100 numbers. How we can do this? Uh, there is a function or, or a verb as it's called in J, um, Yota, uh, I actually, which is from the Yota of ABL, uh, which is uh, what creates a, is a range from zero to the number you put. So if we put I dot 10, it will create an array of uh, 10 numbers from zero to nine. So it's like the range function in Python, if you know Python. Um, and let's say we want to, to add all these numbers together. So we just do the slash, uh, plus slash uh, I dot, uh, it will be from zero uh, until nine. Um, we can do more numbers. Uh, let's see uh, the first uh, 101, so from zero until 100, okay? So this is uh, like, um, this is the problem they, they gave to Gauss. And as I, I said in my previous first uh, talk, this is uh, uh, 5050, uh, 50, so it's 5050, uh, if I recall correctly. And um, we, we did it again uh, fast on the Gauss, which is nice. So I have some other examples here we can, we can check. Um, the first examples are taken from a very nice presentation uh, article that uh, Devon has written. Uh, you can see the link in the references. All right, so um, the, the dollar sign, let's see what the dollar sign does. So if we have a dollar sign and then we have an array, it returns three. So one could, um, argue that this gives the, the length of the array. But then we have the, the hash, or it's called tally in J, that returns the same. And one could be uh, con con confused. So let's, let's create a two by two matrix, and let's see how we do that. Um, well, the dollar sign pretty much uh, reformats an array and according to the dimensions that you put on the left of it. So uh, two, two, uh, because we want a two by two uh, array. And then let's create the, with the I, the Yota, and let's put here um, four. So we see that we create the um, two by two, uh, zero, one, two, three. Now, if we, we just, we can also um, name the variables in J, uh, with two ways. Uh, the first way is the, the global um, refer and the global assignment, uh, which is um, this way. So let's assign a name to this one. Let's call it A. And it's uh, equals and, and the colon. So this is the global one. Uh, it works in the whole uh, workspace. Whereas uh, the local one um, is the equals and the dot. So you can use that inside the function. We can see later how you can define your own verbs and uh, it will not be available outside the, the scope of that. So um, A, again, we see we saw it's the, the matrix. So if we do um, dollar sign and A, we see uh, it returns an array, uh, two, two, which is the dimensions of, uh, of that matrix pretty much. And if we do the, the tally with the A, we see that it returns uh, A, uh, sorry, two. Um, so um, in, in this case, um, and correct me if I, if I say it wrong, uh, the, the tally, uh, if it acts on an um, object that is not of dimension one, like an array, it returns the, the length of uh, one of their array of their rows, but let, let's uh, see if this is true. Uh, if I'm saying something silly here, let's create a B matrix of dimension two by three, okay, with the same way. And we want uh, six elements, so I'll just use an iota six. Um, all right, so it's two rows uh, with three columns. And if we do the tally with the B, we see it gives a two. And uh, let's create a C of uh, matrix of three by two. Yota six, let's see. And all right, so well, we, we saw experimentally that uh, the tally, if it's applied on a matrix, it returns 
the length of the columns. Okay, and um, we can see that the B has a dimension two by three and the C uh, three by two. All right, uh, so I have some other examples here. Um, for example, if, if we run this one, we see that it returns um, four nine four ninety nines. And I've done various experiments pretty much to, to understand how this works. And uh, we you see here it has a comma, and we could do it without a comma and see what, what, what it gives. So we see that it gives a two by two matrix with uh, only one element, uh, 99. Um, so we, we understand that pretty much the, the comma uh, before, like acting as the last element, of this uh, expression, um, we could say that it flattens, it flattens out the, the matrix. So let's see if uh, we have the C, and we see that uh, it does that. So uh, it pretty much flattens the, uh, the, the matrix into one dimension array. Um, well, we can get a matrices for bigger dimensions than two or meaning um, that it's, it will be like, uh, so these are two dimensional uh, matrices, okay? We could create uh, three dimensional matrices or four or whatever dimension you want. And, and there we, we go into the weird um, uh, area of uh, tensor algebra and all that that could be used in, in physics or in uh, uh, mathematics that have uh, 3D rotations and things like that. So let's create a, a matrix D of um, dimension three. And uh, let's say that it has um, two, three, four. Um, okay, so it will be a three by four matrix uh, with two, two times. So you will see like uh, two, uh, array, two matrices of three by four. So how many uh, elements we will need? We need 24. Three times four, uh, 12, and uh, two times 12 is 24. So uh, the, and here we see uh, what I mean by uh, a higher order uh, matrix. So if we do the, the dollars, okay. Oh yeah, Devon is here, so, okay, let's. Hello Devon, hi, uh, thanks for joining. Um, so we were just exploring some basic matrices and some basic calculations and manipulations of matrices. And um, so oh, we have a chat, sorry. Well, uh, you can make the font bigger. Yeah, yeah, I will. And the tally gives you the leading dimension, okay. And I can shortcut my construction by using I234. Okay. All right. So if I do I234, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I didn't know that. Thanks. So I, yeah, sorry, I will uh, change the, the font because uh, it's pretty small. So uh, such a font, I uh, just put 20. And uh, yeah, and make it a bit better bigger here. Let's go down, okay. All right. And um, Jay has another uh, construct which is called boxing. So th this, if you, if you come with uh, from C, you can um, think about them like complex structures. So you can combine various kind of um, data into one uh, box. Um, and here I have an example, but I want to make it a bit more uh, complicated. So I'd like to, to put more uh, different kind of objects. And let's see, I'll, let's put a, a complex number as well. And 
I think we can we can look, look it put also uh, a yeah. So you see here a number, a string, a complex number, and a two by two matrix. And this is pretty nice, I think. And you, you can also um, select um, elements from the box. Uh, what I, I won't get into that now. Uh, maybe later. And we have also a verb that um, selects the number of uh, uh, sub uh, strings of a string. So let's see, uh, we have a string food. Um, we see that if we don't put anything on the left of the verb uh, with a curly brace and a dot, it uh, just selects the, the first uh, element. If we put two, we see that it selects the first two. And uh, also we have also um, a verb that selects the, the last element of a string, okay? Uh, let's select it again, same. So, um, thought it is. And uh, I have some other examples here uh, with arrays, and uh, you can use the, um, you can use actually the, the same the same the same verbs with uh, with arrays. So um, four and three four. Okay. So um, this one selects the first. This one selects the last. And um, uh, the yeah. Also, we could also say that. Uh, mentioned that the negative numbers are um, the, uh, written with uh, the underscore. So um, it should be true. Uh, true. True is uh, always one and false is always uh, zero, like this. And I have uh, done some other examples here. And uh, let's see this example. Uh, so this is the division operator. And you can see here that pretty much uh, as we did earlier, we do the pairwise division. So two divided by three, three divided by four, and five divided by six. And uh, we can do it here as well. Um, actually, I did it afterwards to demonstrate how it works and put it in a nice box. So we see that um, there's one to one correspondence. Um, what else we can do? Well, this has, these are like arithmetic examples. Um, let's say we want to calculate the powers of, of two uh, from zero until uh, say 16. Um, this is like a very well known number to the 16th power. And And yeah, so this is the logarithm. Um, when you do the uh, this verb, uh, as far as I remember, is the logarithm. So uh, four and uh, let's put eight. Okay, so you see that um, the logarithm with base two of eight is three. All right, so the logarithm of uh, with base 10 of 100 on 10,000, it will be four. And here I have uh, applied it in um, two arrays. So I, we, we can see that it accepts also um, arrays on the left and on the right. So you can do it at the same time as uh, adding two numbers or dividing uh, two arrays, sorry. Uh, yeah, here I have done more examples of that. And, and this verb, this can be the, the floor, but also it can be the, the minimum. So in this case, when um, it has two, um, two parameters, two, two arguments, one on the left and one on the right. So we call them dyadic because of the two uh, 
from uh, from the Greek dial. Um, it means two. It has two arguments. Um, it works as uh, find the minimum. So in pretty much in this way, it does again the pairwise operation uh, to uh, 99, and it finds the, the minimum of these two numbers. And three, one is one, and four, two, you can see it's a two. But when you, you apply it as a monadic, so it has only one argument of a number, let's say three, 14, it, it, it gives the closest uh, integer that's smaller than the number you're trying. And also we have the, uh, the ceiling uh, function. So I have here an example, uh, copy that, which uh, as expected gives us four because it's the next biggest thing, the integer uh, 3.14. So if we do uh, again this example with, but with uh, the ceiling, oh, I did another example here, okay. I'll use this one. We can see that uh, two is greater than 1.1, so it returns two. 0 0.1 is less than 0 0.5, so it returns 0 0.5. And one is uh, less than 1.9, so we get 1.9. So this is the maximum um, function, pretty much. If you want to, to find which number is maximum between two, you can use this one this way. And now I have prepared some examples with uh, what I think is real nice with uh, J. You can do pretty nice visualizations. So there is a library called QMAT. And um, I took an example from the gallery and played it around with it. So it's, uh, it's a fractal. Um, I think you will recognize it. OK, so. This is the carpet, I think it's called Sherpinski carpet or uh, something like that. And then um, if, you, if, you, if we want to visualize a very complex expression like either this definition of uh, Y, which is this one, um, well, um, a beginner or could uh, be a bit complex, uh, confused how this works. Or the, the last one, which we see. So, view mat is a dyadic uh, verb that takes one thing on the left and one thing on the right. Uh, we could uh, use the very nice tool that's called dissect in J. And um, I really did like using it, uh, preparing this presentation. And actually, while I'm learning J, because it really helps me understand um, how the computation goes. And also, um, this verb on the left, uh, the semicolon and colon, breaks down an expression into the words. So if we do that, we can see that um, the tally with the dot is one thing together. Uh, the power and the, the colon is one thing. So we, we can separate and we can also enhance our understanding. But let's see uh, what happens if we run this. All right. So you can choose um, various things uh, as, uh, sorry, uh, the detail of explanation. So I'll just put uh, one line because um, it can be very verbose if you want to, to explain things. So we can see here that we have uh, an atom, okay, the number, and then it gets applied on the iota dot. And we can see what happens after the, the calculation of this actually thing. We can see that the box uh, becomes um, pink. So the result is this array, which as expected will have 243 numbers from zero to 242. And then uh, this computation goes into this complex expression here. And uh, we can see that it creates a matrix uh, of dimension uh, 243 uh, times five. And we can see that uh, it has zeros and also two. So it's from zero to two. It's like a, not a binary, like 
trinary arithmetic. I'm not sure how we could call it. And then, um, and then the final uh, computation is this one. And we see here uh, an atom uh, comes in and we get the, the Y uh, in the end. So uh, why is a matrix? Um, I went into big lengths here actually after that to understand exactly how this works. So we can, um, we can work uh, this step by step. Okay, so um, afterwards I uh, tried to dissect the expression where we plot the, the, the fractal, okay, so the, the second expression. The first dissect was the definition of y, and then I run dissect again with, with this expression, and, and let's see what this gives. Um, sorry, I think I pressed it twice, or, oh yeah, yeah. So, um, so we see that this is a bit more complicated uh, thing. We get we have the y here, and um, this operator what does it uh, returns the transpose of the same matrix. So we see that the original matrix was two point forty three dimension times five, and the result is five times two point uh, two hundred forty three, and then we see if we go down that we input here in this expression, um, the, the transposed matrix of the, on the right and, and this Y matrix on the left. And then we get uh, two, uh, 243 uh, times 243. So if, if we uh, recall a bit of our college algebra, we remember that if we multiply two matrices of dimensions where the uh, inner dimension is the same, we get a, a matrix of the outer dimension. And that's what happens here, uh, as far as I understand. And if we go a bit more down, so we have uh, this matrix now, which is the result of the whole thing, this whole thing, uh, and it's been merged with this matrix three by three, which uh, is the color palette pretty much. And those two are getting merged in UMAT and we get the fractal. Um, so we might uh, have some questions like how exactly this word, verb works and is it indeed a matrix multiplication? Uh, but I'm sure uh, that um, dissecting a complex expression gives us more insights and it's very nice to have a, a visual tool to, to inspect our computations. And I, I really like uh, dissect, so I think it's a real nice uh, feature of J. And here I played around with the fractal, so I created a, a Y3, and then a Y5, and then a Y general. So if we go a, a bit down, um, here we can see that um, this is a way to, to create a verb. So let's, since we came here, I can give a short introduction. Uh, and to how you create, can create uh, your custom verbs. Uh, the X and the Ys are the arguments. Uh, the Y is the right argument, and the X is the left argument of the verb. So we can see here that uh, I have defined actually the verb plot serp. Let me actually uh, maximize this one. So um, I, did, I pretty much took the code uh, from above and because I was lazy and didn't want to keep uh, copy pasting things, I said, let's define a verb. So I took the palette uh, as to find the example, uh, the view mat and the Y here, uh, the computation here and the Y on the right. So um, if you, let's, let's run, let's uh, run this one actually. Okay. And, Let's run also uh, this one. And if we plot the first one, we can see that we get uh, um, kind of the same, but not exactly the same. 
I found out why, which was the reason, and the reason I found that was um, the number you had to put here was uh, powers of three. Uh, for some reason, uh, this uh, number three and this number have to be uh, powers. Uh, the one has to be powers of the other. So if we run this one, we can see we get a really nice uh, fractal. And um, I played around with the numbers. And uh, on my old laptop, I went up to three to the eighth, and uh, I, can, I can I could use that with this uh, laptop because it has more memory. But um, it was you can see that the detail becomes more interesting, and it's really nice. Um, we, we could actually uh, try this out this, on this laptop. I think it, will, it could take a bit of time, but uh, I hope. It on crash. Let's see. Okay, it's loading. Um, oh, well, okay. Nice. All right, so it works. works. Okay, so um, I tried with uh, the Tweaking the, the number here with f5. So if we use uh, y5, we get uh, similar looking uh, fractals, but a bit different, as you will see. So that a bit different. Uh, I think they have more colors um, than three. And if we inspect uh, the, the y5 matrix in the terminal, uh, I think we will see that's different. Actually, Y5 is not a matrix, sorry. Um, yeah, a Y5, uh, 6, 2, 5. So yes, we see that the numbers are from 0 to 5. So it seems that we create different kind of um, art arithmetic instead of binary or trinary, we go to the five digits. And here I I created a general um, to play around and we'll see how it looks. Um, I created some. So this one is the well-known triangle, uh, Sierpinski triangle. And uh, we, if we use only zero and ones, if we use the three, we'll get what we saw earlier, the, the squares. Uh, the four, we haven't seen that. We can see that now. It looks like this, which is weird as well. Uh, six. So you see, it's, it's really nice that with J, you can experiment and play around and uh, try to discover things that will be easier than doing it on doing them on paper, for example. Um, seven, uh, you can see it gets a bit more weird as we go up. So if we go to nine, uh, it comes a bit, uh, I don't know, not, not very nice. I think that the, the best one is the, the three. Uh, the, the, the three, yeah. So it's, it's this one. Uh, very well now. So, uh, well, okay, we saw some fractals. Uh, I've done also some plots. The other um, library that uh, Jay has is the plot. And here's an example I took again from the gallery. Um, it's pretty much the, the plot of uh, sign of exponential, of, of exponent uh, x, and uh, cosine of the exponent of x. So we see that it reminds us um, the exponential function and the, the trigonometric functions as well. Um, so this, this in here uh, pretty much gives the range. We can see how it works and maybe draw a different range. Um, I, 3j, 1,100. So if we do a smaller, um, like this, we see that it creates 
arrange uh, arrange from minus three to three, and these are ten numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we can not count it. Just do the tally and see how much it is. So it's eleven numbers. Okay, um, because we have the zero in between. And so pretty much it divides the the range the the interval interval from minus three to three into ten uh, points. And okay, so let's uh, we saw that the, this plot um, looked like that, and we can see that the x uh, goes from minus uh, one to two. Um, this is a bit weird. Uh, I was expecting it to be from minus three to three. And um, let's see if we put 10, how it will look like. So we see that it becomes more weird. Uh, okay, so we see that uh, we have like an exponential fall and then some kind of oscillations. Same here, but it doesn't look really nice. Um, So afterwards, I played around with uh, the ranges I saw, I showed you. Uh, so we can see uh, the iota of uh, ij10. So um, ij10 is a complex number, okay? So uh -huh. ij10, uh, we can calculate its uh, absolute value, which is like the, um, the measure of the length. And with uh, the uh, vertical slash, uh, the vertical line. So one J ten uh, is, you know, it's pretty much the uh, square root, the square root of of one uh, plus a hundred. Uh, let's do something more interesting. Uh, the one J one. Okay, so imagine you have a triangle with. Uh, the one of the vert of the um, uh, one of the straight edges, uh, length one, and the other one, one and one as well, and the, the other one will be square root of two. So we'll see here that we can calculate uh, the square root of two like that. Uh, and, um, here I have another dissect of the plot. Um, I'm going to have a look again. And we see it's a bit more complicated as well. well uh, I have put two to, to show um, where some um, idiomatic uh, expressions of uh, J are uh, shown, the hooks and the forks. I won't get into those in this uh, talk because they're a bit more advanced. Um, but we can see that again, um, dissect, um, give us some nice insights. So I, I did uh, another calculation from physics. Um, we have uh, the gravitation acceleration, which is around 9.81. And let's say we want to calculate um, in uh, some seconds uh, how many. Uh, meters, you will be below the level of the point uh, you, you threw the ball. So this is the function I defined. It's the height, I call it height, but you could call it a y, uh, like the, the axis, uh, the y axis. So it's uh, one half j and the square of uh, the time. So I put y here because, as we said before, the uh, argument on the right has to be called y. And so here we can see that in after 10 seconds, um, you will be uh, around 500 meters below uh, the point you, you throw the ball. So the, the ball will be um, after 10 seconds that, that low. And um, let's apply this function in a list. We can see here the values. And then, okay, uh, let's create a, an array of uh, time frames, okay? Um, we did that, and then we created the array of the 
function applied on the time points. I did that as well, sorry. And then I thought plotting it. And we're expecting it to look uh, like a x squared, where like t squared were times. Um, okay, so it's the second order, second uh, order polynomial uh, form, and it grows like that. Um, uh, I have prepared another example from um, uh, from the uh, gallery again. So there's a way to calculate the gamma function, which uh, pretty much the gamma function is like a generalization of the factorial, but for real numbers. And we can define it like that. So uh, if we say gamma uh, applied on iota 10, the first 10 numbers, we see that we get this underscore that will explain with this one, one, two. So this is six, uh, three factorial, four factorial, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And um, uh, let's put 12. Yeah. Um, so the underscore is the, the infinity um, because it, it starts from zero. So gamma zero. Um, is infinity because if we uh, actually I, I have a plot of the gamma function, um, but um, as far as I understand, gamma uh, gets um, complex and can get complex um, uh, values as well. So we have defined here a verb that calculates the, the, the area part of a complex number. And um, it's a bit complicated. Um, I might uh, try to, under, to explain a bit later, but let's go through this and see how uh, this works. And I'll try to explain line by line. So this, as I said, this, this defines the, take the real part of a complex number. And um, this, what does, as we saw earlier, it creates um, an array from minus four to four, uh, divided in 41 points. And here, um, from minus one to one, again, 41 points. And here we create a, a, an array of complex numbers. Um, actually, if we, do, if we do this, we will see that we get an array of complex numbers. But if we take the real of this thing, we'll take the real uh, part of it. So we can see here uh, this uh, expression uh, gives an array. Uh, let's see which dimension has. Um, okay. So it's 41 times 41 because uh, X and Y are arrays of 41. And this pretty much creates, yeah, uh, the. Um, the matrix uh, combining values from X and Y. And then we, up, we feed the matrix. Let's see how it looks. Uh, this matrix before fed in the gamma function. Okay, so these are all complex, complex numbers, as you can see. Minus J minus one, minus J uh, minus 0 0.95. So we can see the steps. And if we go back to this line, um, this pretty much keeps, uh, filters uh, this matrix between uh, this range of uh, numbers. So if we do this plot of the data, we'll see a really nice uh, 3D, uh, like a surface of the gamma function of the real uh, values of it. So we see here that it has some spikes um, at this point, I think it goes to infinity. And I have played around with the numbers. So if we do this, we can see it from a different. You can see how it gets a bit ugly looking. And then I thought, uh, okay, these were the, the real. So this was the real surface of the uh, 
uh, gamma function, let's see the imaginary, how it looks. So uh, this verb uh, keeps the imaginary part of a um, complex number. So if we run those, I pretty much did the same as before. And you can see, uh, just change the data uh, range. And if we do the first plot, you can see it looks a bit, a bit different. Um, I'm pretty certain that one can create uh, GIFs of these images, but I didn't have the time to prepare them yet. Maybe I will and add them on the page. And yeah. Um, so I did also prepare some calculations with matrices. So uh, let's create a three by three random valued matrix called A. Uh, let's say, and let's see how this works. Um, the gist is this part, which as we seen earlier, the dollar sign uh, formats the array on the right of it into uh, matrix of dimension. Uh, this, uh, in this uh, case, a three by three. So the question mark uh, does a random selection of uh, nine numbers with from zero to eight. So we see every time it gives different numbers. And I added one because um, I wanted to, to calculate uh, inverses and uh, sometimes zeros uh, don't really help with that. And so I uh, just added uh, one on the matrix. So it gets added uh, on every uh, number. So we have this, this uh, nice matrix and we can see the dimension is three by three. It's expected. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, using uh, this expression, we get the transposed matrix. So you see that uh, 659 is the first column where before it was the first row. And the same happens with their next rows are the columns of the, this matrix. So let's call it with a name, let's call it AT. AT is this matrix. And I have created the verb here, which is the, how to do the inverse of a matrix and how to do an inner product between um, either matrices or vectors or arrays. So we can see here that we know that when we multiply a matrix with uh, its inverse, it should return the, the identical matrix. So let's see if we get that. And nice, we get the main error uh, because I did something wrong somewhere. Um, I think I have fixed it somewhere later or no, sorry. Um, well, uh, inverse A is this one, okay. So um, A inner inverse A, it gives out okay, inverse A, I'll just define it. Yes, and then A inner inverse A, it gives the minor. Um, most likely it's a mistake I, I, I do. Um, yeah, I got, sorry, a comment. Thank you, San Diego, it was nice seeing you. I'll uh, upload the video on the YouTube so you can uh, look at the rest of it. Thanks. So, um, Let me see actually this example with uh, the inner doesn't, so the inner product uh, seems to not to be working for some reason. Oh, okay. I forgot the, the multiplication. Yes, you're right, you're right. Um, so, yes, thanks Bob. And then this should work now as well. Okay, let's see it a bit better. So 
we see that the first row is one, zero, and then this is very close to zero. It's minus, uh, it's 10 to the minus 16. And then this is like pretty much the same, minus zero, uh, one, zero, uh, zero, zero, one. So this is, um, it, it looks like the identity matrix. It would be nice if we have zeros, but instead of float, float numbers that look uh, that are very close to zero. But um, at least this uh, shows that our calculation works. And then I should, uh, I should have, yeah, forgot to, to copy the, the multiplication sign. So we saw that the inner product of uh, two arrays as well um, works. And I have uh, the confirmation here. So we know that the inner product is the pairwise product per pair and then the sum of the whole thing. So let's see, and we see that it's the same result. There is another verb, uh, which is this one, it's very nice. And um, pretty much it tells you if uh, a matrix is a square or not. And let's see, uh, A, so we have A. Um, we see that it returns one and let's create, I think D is, uh, or, or is it C, C? yeah. So C is not a square, it should return zero. Yeah, so what, what this does, um, let's see in the site actually, uh, it explains it. Okay, so we have our matrix here. I think I can, uh, Change the font as well. Uh, sizes, no, size, okay, 20. Okay, I'll right. just uh, do it like that. And for some reason, it doesn't let me to make it bigger, but it doesn't matter. So we have C. It's a three by two matrix, and we get the the dollar sign, so we get dimensions, and then so this is an array, okay? Uh, the result of the dollar sign on the C, it returns the array three two, and then we have the slash, and with equal. So what does it applies the equal sign in an array with three two elements, and it checks pretty much if the dimensions are equal. So if we add this into the array one, two, three, four, it returns zero. And if we apply it into one, 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 it returns one. If we apply it into one, 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 two, again, there's zero. So it's a really nice trick to check when a matrix is uh, square or not. And, um, Okay, thanks. And I have also uh, another example uh, calculating the determinant of um, a matrix. Okay, so we have uh, this verb which is calculating the determinant. And let's create, uh, let's calculate the determinant of this matrix, which is minus two, and then, well, um, if we see the matrix, the two by two, it's this matrix. So we remember that in the two by two matrices, the determinant is the uh, product of the main diagonal elements minus the diagonal of the, uh, not uh, main uh, diagonal elements. So it's, uh, four minus six, uh, which is more minus two. Um, and then I, I, I did uh, two examples with polynomials and just, I'll just show um, the roots. 
Um, it, it's pretty nice uh, that Jay has a very nice expression. So you have, uh, let's say we want to, to solve the very well known um, polynomial uh, x squared plus one equals zero. Okay, so this has two roots and both of them are complex. So uh, how do we do it in J? We just use the um, verb P dot, and then the, the um, coefficients of the polynomial. So we see here that we get a box array and um, with the two roots here. Um, I couldn't find, uh, actually I, I got this from the book, of a book of Ken, uh, Exploring Mathematics, I think it was called. And I couldn't understand why it gives uh, a number, like the first um, coefficient on the first uh, box. And because I have another example I will show now with a more uh, complex um, polynomial. So this is a pretty nasty one if you want to do it graphically because uh, the, as you can, as you, as you will see, the roots are between um, one and two. So yeah, between one and two. So if you plot the function from um, minus five to five, uh, it does a very delicate uh, oscillation uh, close to zero and you cannot see it graphically. So you have to, to graph it, if you want to, to see the roots graphically, you need to graph it uh, from minus, from uh, uh, from zero to one, and then you can see the, the function uh, crossing the x-axis. So yeah, um, Bob, I don't know if you can explain uh, why p dot and the coefficients gives the the highest coefficient of the highest power. Do you, do you know? Uh, I couldn't find that. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that <laughs> more. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I I didn't have uh, haven't pre pre prepared something else. I'm not sure if you would like to have any other questions. So this is the questions uh, slide. I put some uh, animation as well. And <laughs> so feel free to ask. Uh, I know that many uh, or most of the people here are more experienced in J, but um, I don't mind if you have any questions. Um, if not, uh, these are the references. Uh, Devon, thanks for the excellent uh, Minimal Beginner J article. It was really nice. I mentioned before you joined that uh, uh, it really helped me with this presentation, uh, with the first examples. And then I took, um, as you can see, with the most examples from um, the J page, and I did the video reading uh, from J Primer. And actually, this is a nice article from Roger about the implementation of J. You can check, and this is really nice. Uh, vocabulary of J, which uh, pretty much has every verb and every explanation, which is so well made and really helpful for beginner and or not uh, so beginner. So you can press and it explains what it does and has examples and, and it, it's really nice. And you can see also that you have um, so the color code, verbs, adverbs, conjunctions, nouns, copulas, and control operations. So you can see similar to other languages, expressions like assert, else, else, if, if, throw, for uh, exceptions, try, catch, uh, while, cases, go to, continue, for, return, and break. But um, I believe that most of the times uh, using the J way of writing programs, it's much faster for the J interpreter than using the usual um, C way of our um, programming. Uh, 
be. Yes, I, I will. I will after the presentation. I think it would be better to do it afterwards. Thanks. Um, and then, oh, sorry. Uh, how did I do, do with that? So, yeah, thanks. You're all there, the very friendly, uh, welcoming uh, community uh, I found on the Discord server and then Bob uh, to help with uh, the questions I uh, had uh, during this time, which preparing the presentation, and Devon for his article and for other articles he's written. Very really nice. And actually, the JSON website has more, so much material, so many, so many articles for many um, experts in J uh, that you can study forever with us and become better and better. And thank you all for joining as well. So uh, we have some, some more time if you, if you want. I was planning to do it like one hour and a half. I don't know if you want to do a discussion on what I tried to present or if you have any uh, questions. Well, I could, I could look the, the P. Yeah, the roots. So you can see here uh, that it returns uh, a multiplier and the roots. So two and the roots. And yeah, I don't understand yet. I think I'll have to dive into it after a day presentation. Um, so as I said uh, earlier in the history at least, uh, I had opened uh, the APL wiki here from Jay. You can, um, if you are beginners, you can look in the APL wiki for information. Uh, Jay has a really nice history here. You can see all the versions and the features added. And uh, so this is the, as I shown earlier, the first the brother of Jay, written by Arthur. Um, the page for Arthur on IBL Wiki. Um, the page for Ken, uh, Roger, and Eric. So, um, yeah, so I, I, um, I think we, uh, we could stop here. <laughs> before I get more embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, really thank you, thank you all for joining. It's, a, it's an honor for me uh, to have you in my uh, meetup. And I hope next time I'll show more exciting, more interesting things uh, from Jay or from APL. Um, uh, this moment I'm going towards Jay more, but uh, I think I'll do a comeback into APL uh, pretty soon. So, yeah, Thanks, Bob, you want... Yeah, I was just going to say the the uh, thing with the um, polynomials. I don't use them very much, so that's why I really don't know that area. Okay, yeah. Um, but I was I was just looking at the uh, Nuvok page, and it looks like it's a different representation of how to write a polynomial. Mm -hmm. So you've got your multiplier and your roots, and then they have a different way of writing it. And I guess that's the way they present the solution, so that you could convert back and forth because you've oh. already got the roots. And then you could write it in a different way if you knew the multiplier. Yes, I that's think right. That's what they're doing. Could be right. because uh, yeah, I read in that book of Ken that once you, you know the roots, you can go back to the back to the coefficients, so you can get the polynomial back. Yeah, and I think that's what he's doing with the alternate form. But the other thing you got to remember, I'm not sure when that book was written by Ken. Yeah, there I will think... be there will yeah. be things in it that aren't current J. So in other words. I would imagine most of it would work, but there will mm -hmm. be occasional things you'll see that will be different. And yes, that is yes. one of the things with, with the things that he's written is they were think they were written usually in the late 1990s. Yes, I think they're a bit old uh, and the yeah. language has uh, evolved. So some things could be different. Yes, that's expected. Yeah, and you just have to that's take true. that into account. It's The information's really good, but mm -hmm. some of the syntax might have changed a little bit. Yes, um, yes, yes, of yeah. course, of course. But it's really nice. Actually, it was uh, J was the first language, as I said in the previous meetup, 
I uh, for the ABL family that I got uh, to know. Um, I saw it first time in some uh, problem in the Euler project where you solve uh, mathematical problems with whatever language you want, and it was really it was a nice solution, like a typical one-liner. And then I found the JSOT website and uh, saw the books of Ken. Um, and uh, I was really interested in, um, impressed actually that he had written whole books in, let's say, calculus, arithmetic, a uh, lot of stuff. Uh, it was really nice. Yeah, I think, uh, well, Ken was a mathematician, but I think also one of the things you notice about him is he's, he wanted, I think he was a teacher. Yes, he definitely that's for sure. That's for sure. Wanted to yeah. teach people at the a very yeah. young age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. And, Teaching and mathematics go together. The most mathematicians I've met are very well, very good teachers. So uh, they like to explain their ideas and um, uh, spread them. Actually, not go and explain. So I think I think the more successful ones tend to be. I think the ones who aren't good teachers don't spread their ideas as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's it's hard to be a good researcher and good teacher. As well. Uh, yeah, so. I think that's absolutely true. I've I've certainly been taught by some mathematicians who were excellent researchers, and I'll leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree. It happens. I think it's the, the most common thing. Uh, it's a rare combination to have both things. Yeah, and and I think Ken was one of the people that had both, and that's why mm -hmm. uh, a lot of his ideas have endured. And the fact that he ended up putting together a language and, and originally his idea of J was not, or APL was not as a computer language. It was as a notation. Yes, that's language. true. Find out a way to teach people about linear algebra and, and mm -hmm. tensors. Um, and he had, didn't really have a way to express it that he thought was, was useful. And as a result of those experiments, he ended up creating a computer language because it turns out computers can understand tensors even better than people do. Um, and can keep track of all those things where people have trouble when they get up above, you know, three and four dimensions. Yes, um, yes. Uh, you start to I, visualize, and visualizing, I don't think, always works in those areas. I think we are hard, hardwired to be able to visualize into three dimensions from there, from four and above. I think it's hard. It gets harder uh, and I for think humans. For both APL and J, that's one of the powers of them that... Mm -hmm. Um, it allows you to experiment in those areas. So you start to develop a, a feel for what's going on. You know, yes. it's almost, yes. it, sometimes it feels, it's a bit like quantum mechanics. You yes, don't exactly know what's going on. Yeah. But yeah. after a while, you start to get a, an intuition about what might mm -hmm. be happening. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's I the think feeling. The, the experimentation you get to do with these languages on a computer really helps that. Um, so it starts to make you, if you can't, visualize in three in four or five dimensions um perhaps you can have an intuition about what's going to happen in those areas um and i yes, think I, that's one of the power of all the array languages they do that for mm -hmm. you. and i think i've found in the JSON software website some articles and i can't remember the username the name of the user uh, but he's done a lot of work uh, with tensors using j um uh, I think Riemann geometry and maybe general relativity stuff as well. Really interesting things. But maybe you know the name, but um, well, there's yeah. there's a wiki contributor. I haven't talked to him yet, but I think his name's Thomas Allen. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's Thomas. Um, and and maybe, he's, yeah. he's almost using parts of the wiki as a, as a way to post his experimentation mm -hmm. and his results. Yes, and yes. I, I, I am looking forward to talking to him at some point because he's he's obviously doing some really interesting things. Mm -hmm. He's got much better understanding of tensor geometry and stuff than I do by miles. Yes, <laughs> yes, measured yes. in miles. Um, <laughs> it may be you know <laughs> parsecs. I don't know, um, <laughs> but it's it's completely it, it's really interesting. And he's using a lot of the stuff that you showed with plot. He's mm -hmm. using that to be able to show his results. So he's being. <laughs> but only over, um, I would say, a part of the tensor. So it's he's like it's like he's taking snapshots of different views of it. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah. 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 It's kind of interesting to see what he's doing with that. As I said, I haven't talked to him, so I don't have a good understanding of what he's doing. 
<laughs> yes, I yes. That's what how he's approaching it, which is pretty cool. And he's using it experimentally. There's no doubt about it. He's he's trying things out and getting results and posting his experimental results with it. That's um, real so nice. Thing. Yeah, it becomes a really good tool in some areas for sure. If mm -hmm. you can, um, if you if you get comfortable with the language, it becomes much easier to experiment. Um, and I think I, I find that with Jay, um, I find it with Jay, there's a few things that Jay does better than APL because it was sort of Ken's newer version of APL. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Dialogue has since incorporated some of the ideas so that you can from do it now. Jay, yes. From Jay. Um, and then there's of course BQN, which is the, uh, Marshall mm -hmm. Lockbaum's new version, um, which, uh, looks a little bit more like APL because the glyphs aren't uh, ASCII. Yes, yes, um, I remember. But he also has other things that he can do that Jay um, has has trouble with, which is the very high order functions where you're trying to do things like arrays of adverbs and then applying them as arrays. Oh, okay. You can do that a little bit with Jay if you, if you really get into it, but I think it's something that uh, Marshall's been able to do with BQN now, BQN is just starting out, so it's very experimental. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <coughs> yeah. And uh, regarding the, the tensors and all that, I remember I had found uh, a very interesting paper slash book of uh, uh, Chaitin, that mathematician, the Argentinian mathematician. I, uh, he wrote in April 2, back in the 1922, and he did some calculations in, with tensors. Uh, general relativity, Maxwell equations, uh, quantum mechanics, and all that. And he did some plots, like primitive plots uh, with ASCII symbols. I am I think it would be really nice if we could do that, if we could port that um, ideas and calculation into J uh, with the, the plot or the view map and all that visualization tools it would be really nice. Uh, well, in a lot of cases, it's, it's more a matter of understanding the underlying mathematics, because once you do that, Yes. The yes, conversion yes. to J isn't that hard. It's already mm -hmm. set up to understand yeah. rays in multiple dimensions. Yeah. You do have to know the mathematics well enough to know how to translate. Yeah, of it. course. If you don't understand the, the physics or the mathematics behind it, you cannot go forward to code it. So, yeah. Which is why I find Thomas's stuff so interesting because I think he's in that area where he mm -hmm. understands the mathematics the very well. And now he's mm -hmm. using it, the, the tool that way because he, he knows what he's. He's exploring in the mathematics and then using the tool to basically record stuff. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. He has the theoretical knowledge and he's applying the tool in the theory, you know. So that's, uh, yeah, a very nice application of J. Yeah. All right. So uh, it was really nice talking, talking to you. Um, thank you again all for coming. Um, I would like to, to keep you more. Uh, even if I, I really like your company, um, so uh, yeah, I'll I'll um, I'll plan for for February. Uh, most likely, it will take me uh, a couple of weeks to, to plan it. So uh, I guess we'll be at the end of the month again. Um, That's it. Was a good presentation. It's it's very difficult thank you. to do presentations. Yes, it, it takes time, <laughs> and I was a bit busy later, but I I tried to, to do it as good as possible. Well, I'm not very happy with it, but okay. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> you're, you're always your worst critic. I thought you did very well. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Thank you all. So uh, have a nice night or day, uh, wherever you are. And see you soon. Good night. Bye. Okay. So let's...